I'm Michael Myers, and I'm a comic book letterer. Uh, I kind of got into it uh, after high school. There was like 10 different careers I had, and I was going to school for graphic design, and uh, nothing I had done thus far had like, kind of really fit. Uh, I've been into comics since like 2006. Um, I didn't read them really when I was a kid. I started reading comics when uh, so the comedians comedy with Pat Oswalt uh, and Brian Hussein, like with their own like comedy tour. And during the tour, they would go and stop and get comics every week or wherever they were at. It's like, oh, that looks neat. I, you know, always kind of I like the movies and everything. So then I started reading comics, and eventually, uh, none of their, like I said, nothing else I was really doing was working. So I started uh, messing around with the graphic design and uh, lettering is kind of a similar still skill set. Um, and I spent about a year. Just uh, practicing and playing around with it. Uh, there's uh, classes you can take, like from the Hubert School and probably at like SCAD and stuff. But um, there's an online class at Comic Experience. Um, it was like $3,000, which I couldn't afford. So I kind of just taught myself, um, which is, uh, you will learn here, is. Uh, a reason why I can't really explain it that well. Like I don't. I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm more than happy to share what I know, uh, but I also uh, am not great at explaining what I do. I kind of just learned it on my own, my own way, and I kind of just do. Uh, I, I told somebody like it's like the, in the Dark Knight, the Joker's like I don't have a plan. I just do things. That's kind of how I like. I just I you know put the paper, you know, the page in Illustrator, and I just start working. Uh, if you said like why do you put the panel here why, why do you put the balloon here why do you put the caption here it's just something that you learn from i've learned just from experience of doing it um the uh thing I, the handout i had uh it had a link to this page that i made um there is a couple of different ways you can learn lettering there this is one of the things i got um uh, uh comic book lettering the comic craft way comic craft is like one of the uh, Richard Starfing is the guy who started Comic Craft. He's one of the first guys to um, like start uh, digital lettering. Uh, before, like in the about some mid '90s, everything was done by hand, um, which uh, obviously is very uh, labor intensive. Um, there's a book called DC's Guide to Coloring and Lettering, and from experience, like this much is coloring, and this much is lettering. So it's not very much, but um, there are both two things that I've read that I've read. And last year, Nate Picos put out a big old book, uh, Image, uh, we published it, uh, called the Com uh, Comic Book, what's it called? Essential Guide to Comic Lettering. Uh, it's pretty much a textbook um, on how to letter. It's any, anything you ever want to know and how to start, how to do, and how to make decisions uh, on what you're doing is in there. Um, all, there's links to all those on Amazon, or you can, you know, most of these you guys can just get from a comic shop, you know, they can order it for you, or you can get it from your websites. Uh, there's also a bunch of uh, places that have fonts that are included on that. Uh, Blambot and Comic Craft are like the number two, uh, one and two of uh, um, comic book fonts. Uh, Blambot is great because most of their fonts are like 40 bucks or something like that. Um, See. Some of them are even free, um, which are good. Uh, yeah, twenty bucks. I think the most are like forty. Uh, some of them are free uh, if you're, especially if you're using it for like independent comics or just your own comics, like where you're not going to really make any money off of it. You can use them for free, um, and that's great. Uh, Comic Craft, like I said, is like the, it's the guy who kind of turned uh, lettering into digital. Uh, his are very nice and good, uh, but uh, are very, very expensive. 130 bucks, uh, some of them even go up higher than that. Uh, but they're also, and yeah, they're very nice and very good, you know. Uh, and if you, as you do more and more of this kind of stuff, you'll learn what is uh, good and bad. Uh, and there's also uh, Blambot and True Grid have like uh, brushes that you could use for sound effects especially, but like even if you want to give um, your uh, balloons or captions like some, you know, light beyond just a, 
a plain um, like just stroke. Um, there's tutorials uh, and YouTube videos from a lot of these guys. Uh, all the uh, animal design. Uh, Darren Bennett is a great dude who uh, um, had a lot of good uh, videos on like what it is we do and how we do it. Um, I, uh, like I said, I just started messing around and practicing and playing with it. And there, at one point, there was like forums. Forums really don't exist anymore online, uh, at least for the most part. Uh, it used, used to have job listings. Uh, now, for the most part, once you kind of learn and got a good basis on what you're doing, it's more of just posting on social media and finding friends. Uh, like, a great way of finding like jobs and lettering or just I guess in comics in general would just follow and uh, interact with as many people as you can that also make comics online. Uh, obviously you're at, here at school there's probably a lot of people that are making comics and there's a whole room of people upstairs that are making comics. Um, if uh, I'm not sure if that's, uh, I can, I mean, there's only really a few people here, so if we have questions, I can answer them and I can show things in Illustrator. Uh, that's how I letter. Uh, there's a couple other programs, uh, like, uh, what is the other ones? But like, I mean, there's Photoshop, but like, if you, Photoshop's really not made for lettering. If like you're doing lettering in Photoshop, you're really not, uh, I don't know how, I mean, because it's, for printing and stuff, you really need to have like vectorized art, uh, which you can't do in Photoshop. Um, like, is there like a re like are you, are you been trying to letter or are you learning or? Um, I make comics in my free time and I do some freelancing. If I wanted to just I was in the area, I live in the coast by, so like, I might as well stop by and see okay. what kind of tips. Um, um yeah, like uh, a lot of that, like uh, this in the links and everything has a lot of great uh things. Like, if there's anything in like specific that I could show you right now, I mean, I can. Do my best. I mean, we have plenty of time. Um, I guess I was curious how you. I can see from the side there that you've got like a lot of fonts going on. Yeah, how this is. Uh, yeah, this is like the starting uh, template when I uh, start lettering. I uh, have a couple of different balloons. Um, the ones up here are just pretty much basically the circle uh, balloons, and these ones. I and mean, they all look kind of the same. But if you look at them, they kind of have different little kind of imperfections that make them not just perfectly uh, circles. Um, and then, like you said, yeah, all the fonts. I keep all the sound effects. I if a bunch of different people have it different ways, like some people start uh, and make balloons after they've already made their um, like the words on the page, uh, the dialogue, and everything. I I like having a couple of different ones. These are a lot of the sound effects uh, fonts that I kind of more commonly use um, that I got from some of the websites that I listed uh, before and some that I found other places. Uh, I always find new fonts and new things. Um, but yeah, just picking from the like based on what is like what the sound effect is, you can kind of kind of pick what's from over here. And I have this font here is just I don't even know what it had. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's called Meanwhile. It's just something I put here uh, to see. Like this is the size. If the comic is like a normal size, like that's is I use that kind of to judge off. If I'm picking a different font, because um, even even if the same point size, the same uh, uh, letting and everything in between the lines, uh, if you pick a different font. Like obviously, even that just it doesn't fit the same way in the box. So you gotta increase the size and find. Uh, and even even then, printing it out uh, on a printer and seeing what it looks like uh, is the best way of judging if you have like the right size fonts. Um, uh, like you said, you made your own stuff. Like you. Um. Yeah, I use a lot of. Procreate, which is definitely not yeah. made for lettering like, yeah. at all. Yeah, there's, um, a, there's a couple of like cheaper, like Affinity. Uh, yeah, I think you got uh, Studio Paint too. Yeah. Because um, I posted that has a lot of similarities to Procreate. Yeah. And then I think Procreate has like a lot of similarities to Adobe. Yeah. Um, but I was also wondering, 
how you choose, because like looking at the like impact bonds and the sound effect bonds, it can be, it's, almost, it's a little more, it feels a little more straightforward choosing that for certain sound and then choosing text. Uh, the the, the and, like, dialogue and choosing, captions and stuff. Yeah, choosing the, the font for like, the main body of the dialogue. Uh, yeah, that is, um, there is a little bit more uh, kind of a chance to, I guess, show like, artistically, like, you know, what, or, or it is a it's preference. I mean, it, I mean, there is some things like, uh, uh, um, dialogue fonts. Um, I mean, some of these, like, obviously, the, this one is called Soviet, so kind of, it has it has a definite style to it that looks very Russiany, uh, but I mean a lot of these, yeah, that are that just look are like different handwriting styles uh, of I mean, what do you pick for what kind of thing. Uh, it is, I mean, some of them. Uh, trying to think of a an example, um, like this. I mean, folding staple would be it's named like that because it kind of looks like a handwritten kind of cartoonist kind of style. Uh, this is a like you wouldn't necessarily use this for like a Superman comic or a superhero comic. Uh, like there's things like that where like just the style of it, uh, you know, this is uh, a font. Like you, this, you, you wouldn't really use this for like all, like for the entire comic. This is more for like a, a character that has, you know, like a horror book, like, a, like one character. Uh, I mean, I guess you could use it. I mean, once again, that's kind of, it's up to you, your creative choices or whatever. Um, it is, um, I mean, like, oh, here's one that is very, like, this is very cartoony looking. I mean, I would say it's very cartoony looking, and it wouldn't necessarily, like, if you're making a comic that is like a horror book, you wouldn't use something kind of cutesy and cartoony like this. Uh, there's definite things like that of, like, you, you wouldn't use that for certain things, but a lot of it is just based on the art, uh, the tone of the book, you know, uh, the color, you know, even like the, t like the tone that's set, not just in the art, but just in the, the coloring sets of tone. And you kind of just want to make a cohesive um, package of case of unit with everything, uh, make sure all of it works uh, together, um, which is something you get. I mean, like the, some of the stuff is kind of, you know, obvious what it could be used for. Some of it is more just something you learn through making comics uh, and you put it on the page and you go, well, this doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right, and you kind of make your choices. Uh, and um, like I said, like it, it does come down to just choice and style. I mean, if, I mean, imagine if you're making comics, you actually obviously have uh, like an artistic taste, artistic style of your own, uh, and you can kind of know by looking at something what kind of fits, especially if you're making your own stuff, you definitely know what fits for your style and what you want to see on the page. If you're working with for somebody like said free uh, Lance and working for somebody else, then obviously you have to take a, a little bit of their, um, think about what they would like. And uh, something I've learned is if you don't know the person all that well, do one page and show it to them first. But if you do a whole 22 pages or 20 pages or whatever, and you show it to them and they're like, that is not what I was thinking, then you have a lot of work that you've got to fix. Uh, so, yeah. But it's, especially if you work with the same kind of people a lot, you can kind of feel, get a feel for what they want and what they like, um, the style, the tone, all that kind of stuff. Um, that, that, that answers your question. Thank you. I know I just rambled a bunch. Sorry. I know that you said that you um, were self-taught and, you, and you, yeah. this, this class is simply were too expensive. Nowadays, I feel like with all the resources available, would you, I don't know that you have something to compare it to, but would you recommend that people just try to learn themselves first? Or would you? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the point. I mean, there's, there, if you have money, you can definitely, like, I mean, like, like I said, Cubert School and uh, SCAD, I think you can get through, like, uh, student loans and stuff like that. It'll pay you through that. I mean, I don't know, because... By the time I was learning how to do this, I was already uh, close to 30. So I and I already had uh, two kids and was married for like 10 years. So like going back and doing like a lot of schooling just wasn't an option for me. Uh, like I said, there's uh, let's see what it is. Comic experience. I don't know how much that costs. 
I think it was a thousand or something. So I can spell it wrong. This is not the right one. There we go. Not now. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, learning. Learning a letter in class. Let's see. And I have, a, I have a friend that went through this um, mm. who is very doing, uh, started at yeah, $595 mm. uh, for, let's see how long, it's a couple weeks of classes. Uh, I don't know that guy that well, but I know he does a lot of stuff. But yeah, uh, I mean, and he, I mean, my friend went through the classes. He started about a year after me, and he's, I mean, he made a lot of connections through the classes uh, mm -hmm. and it's gotten a lot of jobs. I mean, it's definitely, there's definitely a way to go. I mean, you learn a lot of things. You make, you make connections like you do with any kind of schooling. Uh, learning it on your own, it is kind of an uphill battle because you, you have to, you know, you have to motivate yourself. You have to find the resource. I mean, even though I, you know, the, that piece of paper handed out has a lot of resources that, that I found, and that you can, you know, make it a little easier for you. But I mean, it's definitely something you can teach yourself. I mean, it just takes practice. And like I said, I did it for like two years, just messing around in Illustrator, uh, figuring out, you know, what you know, like reading the classes, watching the videos, and then just, you know. Do, do it like finding just a page you, know, you can find like unlettered art online a lot of places uh, and just you know just start making balloons and sound effects and just messing around until eventually you can you, gotta, you can feel you gotta feel confident in yourself to just say hey you know, here's what I can do can I you know letter your thing for X amount of dollars um, and see what happens I mean it, but it is, yeah, learning on your own is it's definitely, you have to motivate yourself, just like anything. Uh, you have to motivate yourself and get yourself out there, make yourself practice in your free time. Uh, especially if it's something you want to do, like, as, like I, this is my only job. Uh, I just letter for people. So, like, you know, if you're going to do it for yourself, obviously this, the motivation behind doing it is a little different. And uh, how much, you know, you're just trying to, you know, make it good for yourself. But if you want to work for other people, then yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of work. To, you have to kind of get yourself going and and deciding that this is going to be the thing that you want to do. Because uh, if you ask a lot of other people in comics uh, what they hate doing, they're going to tell you lettering. Because <laughs> they, yes, yes. Oh, I, I mean, you talk. I was just curious. Uh, is there a lot of crossover in like other industries, like for lettering, like publishing kind of lettering, children's books, stuff like I that? Have, uh, I've worked for, um, like, Scala I did the Final Fantasy Freddy's comics, um, and I did a book for, um, what was that company? I can't remember. Uh, Penguin. I've done a couple of things with them. Uh, it's, they mostly, they do lettering and InDesign, uh, which is a whole different thing that I can't do. I've tried. Uh, but a lot of them, I've, I, you know, I've, uh, like even like manga manga lettering is a whole other different skill set but it's similar like a lot of similar stuff but they do it in, in design which is uh, a lot more like typesetting it, it's like a different like graphic design you know doing it in letter and lettering for a comic and illustrator is, is like doing graphic design almost and doing manga or, or, or like publishing uh, with doing it in design it's more like you're like making a book like setting type um, it's a different, similar, but different kind of skill set. Uh, but when I worked with them, I was able to do it in Illustrator and kind of move things over into, like, it's just another extra step that I had to do. But yeah, I mean, it can't, uh, and also, like, uh, because it's similar to graphic design, like logo making and stuff, uh, which is something you, you get to do with uh, lettering, you know, the comic needs. Uh, or you like I have friends that letter comics, and when someone asks to do a logo, they're like, no, I just do this one thing. Um, but there is other skill, like, you know, like I said, if you, if you know graphic design, or if you have any skills in graphic design, it would be a lot easier to start in um, lettering because, you know, the typography, the, you know, flow of the page, all that kind of stuff, uh, it would have a, you know, crossover. Because that's how I started. I was in, like, a community college learning graphic design. 
learned a lot of like about typography and stuff like that, and that's started me on this whole process. So. When you were when you were learning and in school for graphic design, did you know beforehand that this type of lettering was something that you could do with graphic design, or did somebody introduce this to you? Uh, no, just as I was like I was messing around, like I said, with uh, graphic with lettering, and as I went to class and learned more like typography and stuff like that. Like I was like, oh, this is you know. I just kind of realized it's the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't like. I didn't go into lettering or go into this graphic design school thinking that it would connect or anything. That I just. It was like the. Because like I said, I went through different careers and everything. When I was messing around with lettering originally, it was like, oh, I'll I'll just try this. Like I was like I tried a lot. I went to school for like a couple of weeks at a couple, and had a bunch of different careers. Like just trying to figure out what. It was that I was going to do because I was just doing, you know, just this, just you know, job that made money. Uh, so like I was trying to find what I was doing, and it just this one finally something clicked, and it became something I could do, uh, or or not just can do, but actually enjoy doing, you know. Because so, yeah, I see if you don't enjoy doing something, it's just you know, hell, it's just a job, and then it's horrible, you know. So I'm lucky that I get to do something that I actually enjoy doing, and I'm you know somewhat good at I guess because I've, I've been uh, nominated for two Ringo Awards uh, for lettering so like I guess I mean like I was I feel like yeah I'm, I'm really good at what I do I'm like one of the best and the, you know but I mean I've, won, I've been nominated for awards so I guess I'm pretty good at what I do so are we I think yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's time time to, yeah but yeah if I'm here uh, the rest of the day if you have any more questions and also uh, like at Micah Myers on Twitter and on pretty much everything, you can find me and you can ask me more questions if you have anything else, if you think of anything else, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to answer more questions down the road if you have anything. So, awesome. Well, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you.